Oh, no, I, I did well enough that I got a hero. Not what? All right, what's up, guys? Ian and Eric here from Sleep Deprivation doing another SD Talks. We're actually going to be talking about the recent set of patch notes. We're not going to go over everything. We're going to focus on uh, God skins first. Then we're going to skip the fucking achievements because fuck that shit. Then we're going to talk about the item changes and finally God changes and rotating back around to the new God at the end of everything because we feel like that's the biggest excitement. So, uh, starting off with the God skins. Gemini Agni. Eric, thoughts? It's pretty. I don't know. Um, it's cool. They they brought back the Moonwalk, um, kind of with the that the original Agni skins had, which was really cool. The colors are fantastic. Like, holy shit! the The design team did a really good job on all of the skins, uh, for the Odyssey this year so far. The... So I'm really I'm really happy with it. The Scarlet uh, Dangerfield Neath, I think, is super cool for a couple reasons. One, it swaps out the bow for a gun, which, you know, you see in the buck Neath, but it could be pretty cool as well. Uh, two, it is a very rare Neath skin in the fact that there is almost no skin showing. The only skin showing is her face. And even part of that is, like, you know, blocked off by the eye patch, so... Exactly. Super cool, you know. Props to them for bringing out a Neath skin that doesn't make her slutty McSlutson. But don't worry for all of you that are a little bit sad by that, because her mastery skins are out and she looks as slutty as ever. True story. Isis, um, Celestial Isis, pretty cool. Out of the first three I've gone over, not my most favorite, but honestly, this is like probably one of the best skins they did, just because like. Only because the like they had to like, because if you play regular Isis, her feathers are all over the place, whatever, and they flap back and forth when she runs. So they had to can't like they had to basically stop that from happening with this skin. So it took a lot of effort. Also, the stained glass looks so cool in game. I guess I haven't played her it. Abilities. So also, I, her abilities look sick. I don't know for sure because I haven't played it, but I don't know. I guess it is really cool. Uh, I actually haven't checked out the Plague Bear Izanami. It's it's pretty dope from what I've seen. I haven't I haven't played it yet, but the uh, the skin looks awesome. I, I've seen it in game on other characters and it's or other players. It's yeah. very well rounded. It's uh, I'm glad they picked her to do it on and not some like rando, like I don't know a raw <laughs> or something stupid. Yeah. No, no, and it works. It it makes sense for her uh, as a god in general. Uh, Wolfman Fenrir, like dumb, dumb. It basically it's him with the jacket. Um, but it pants. like uh, I forget who we were talking to where it could have been a brilliant skin if they had it, it set Davey. up that. Yeah, we were. I think we were talking about Davy. Uh, hashtag Van Davy. Um, if. They would have made it so that he started off as human, but then when he went into combat, turned into a wolf. Like it would have been which, a, if they had if that they would have had, been a T five skin, but yeah, if they stepped away from like hadn't they stepped away from the like just doing assassins? Fender probably would have been the next T five with this concept, but eh, it's okay. It's creative, I guess. He looks more like an actual wolf now and less like the demon hound that he is so i guess they did do a little bit to his face yeah uh he does look a little bit more manly which is cool uh the wheelix skins just like here's what the wheelix skin in a nutshell have you gone to a halloween party are you an adult in their early 20s you've probably seen a girl that looks like this yeah that's the best way to describe it Slutty Halloween costume. Also, That's what it is. Shout out to all the girls who are going to be doing this at you know at high res, high res con. We salute in the next, you in the and we months. heavily approve. Make sure there's lots of pictures on the internet for research purposes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you have a wife. God damn it. 
is a Namri Masteries uh, as uh, well. You, you so that's nice. Neath Masteries. I already discussed them. I said she's slutty as hell, remember? Okay. All right. uh, Moving yeah, on. Fair. Yeah. Um, Masteries, of course, new ones always look great. Item changes. Gem of Isolation. I really like this. It's having a change from 70 power to 90 power. Uh, I feel like it was a weird niche item that you might see occasionally picked up on like a Poseidon or something like that. And now it has a lot more viability because the power loss was just too great earlier. So I like it. Eric, do you like it? Um, sorry, stretching. I do and I don't. Um, I found like, if you're going to change items, in my opinion, changing some of the mage items is probably the least priority. Um, with like, just because like, if you look at items for mages, the, the list goes on for a while. Like, there, there's a million different combinations you can build into different mages. Whereas with other characters, like hunters and warriors specifically, I mean, you, yeah, it's a long list, but it's not as long as some of the lists. Like, like it's a mage list. I, I get where you're coming on with, like, Gem of Isolation is basically still only going to be usable by certain mages, but I feel like it wasn't getting picked at all. I can't remember the last time I went up against someone that actually ran Gem of Iso before this change. Now this I change did. is... I, not often, though. My point is, is that you know, I get what they're trying to do. They're seeing, hey, you know, items are obviously not being picked for a reason. If they're seeing, you know, next to no actual play, some kind of change is needed in order to make it, you know, more of an option. Because the more viable options there are, the less cookie cutter builds are going to become, the less predictable it might be. And, you know, this could be seen as an offensive or defensive item just because of the value of that slow. But... Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a good change. It's not a horrible change. Um, I can see it being more of a viable item now. Same with uh, that moves on to a Ritual Dagger, same thing. Um, so when they were talking about this in the patch notes, they talked about how Ritual Dagger is really good for Guardians because it both lengthen, l lengthens the... Um, blah, blah, blah. Relics. How long uh, relics are being able to use? Like shell gets used, it comes out for longer. Curse gets popped for longer. Frenzy gets popped for longer. If a guardian builds a frenzy, which I've seen it done, um, same with sprint. So like the team fight oriented uh, relics are really good, uh, good combo with ritual dagger. But they weren't picking it up a because it was super expensive, and as we all know, guardians don't make a whole lot of gold, especially now that tank shoes are basically meta and uh, travel issues are not um so with the with the decrease in gold it makes it a little bit more of a viable item as well as taking away the aspect that made it more like a hunter item um you're not going to see this as often now on damage dealers and yeah. it's going to be more of exclusively like a i'd say almost exclusively guardians that aren't picking up meditation because you're not going to see it on solo laners now because they uh well, they're going to be picking up Teleport as their first uh, Relic, and if they're not, fuck you, you're costing your team the game. I hate you. But... Uh, yeah. So... It... It makes sense. It's making it... It's good and bad. Bad in the aspect that now yeah. you're basically only going to see it on Guardians sometimes. Good in the aspect that it makes it more... You're going to see it more commonly on Guardians as opposed to sometimes on a variety of characters. Uh, yeah. So, um, all right. On the Rune Forge Hammer. So, I mean, I don't know. I think this is an okay item. Um, I. It's it's just like it's such a weird item. Like it's very niche. Like uh, I I can see this being picked up on solo laners to help out in team fights, like solo laners that have that. So like this could be an interesting Ravana item just because, hey, he has slow that he can frequently throw out. 
and it's yeah. going to help his team a lot or like uh it'd be i don't know if it would work at all but it'd be a very interesting combination stacking this with say a frostbound and the fact that now it's not near as expensive yes you're not going to do as much damage but it was never meant to boost your personal damage that's not what this item was for i feel like this focuses the item more on what it's designed to be rather than trying to make it a blend between a personal item and a team item it makes it more of a team item and cheaper i like it that that's me anyways yeah i mean i i still think there's way better options than picking up rune for hammer i'm just, i don't predict seeing this in the near future unless they add damn or uh maybe add physical protections back to it or some um uh, it, well it does yeah, it's have just health like, so i mean it does but like the health eh, it's like iffy i mean i can see this being picked up on say like a support like a support warrior yeah well, that that's would what be I was the thinking. only real yeah like maybe um, maybe a of a mana or a hercules you know someone who's uh got a little bit more of that personal sustainability um that likely will be already building a frostbound and yeah tower right. shield um okay so this is where I start have to, to have an issue. What makes MOBAs boring? Defense. What is Harris buffing? Defense. Why? 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 Well, the to be honest, the tier two of this item was poop. It was it was shit. It was like you're you're basically building this going towards shifter shield most of the time, which is not a commonly picked up item anyways. So, like it, most people aren't going into this tree anyways. And if you are, it makes it a little less painful to get there because Shifter Shield is an expensive item. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I stick by my words when I think that we need to stop buffing defense and start maybe getting rid of defense more and adding more attack items. Pray I to God for that. season four. Pray to God for season four. That's what I'm praying for. God changes Pirates, before you go on a listen. rant. So, yeah, okay. um, Chalk has got some interesting changes. Um, they're not... I don't know if they're necessarily buffs per se. They're like it, It's a little bit of a buff. I feel like it makes it so that he doesn't have to play a certain way. It makes it... Gives him more freedom to play in other ways. Like... Um, torn. You can now use this ability while crippled, uh, but only if no. That is a deployed. good change. Like that basically that makes is it so a that cool change. You can still like torrent was a movement ability in escape, but only if the axe is out. Otherwise, it's just a damaging ability. Now, if you're crippled, you can still do the damage. You just won't not have the escape. Not true, actually. Uh, torrent also gives protections to your to chalk. Oh well, whatever. Oh, it's yeah. it's so the fact that yeah. It's not being treated as an escape unless the trigger, in other words, having the axe deployed, is out. So, a very smart uh, decision that has some probably interesting coding changes. Now, the alt is just flat out buffed. Um, Again, why? Well, let's think about it. Like, chalk is not really... A, a main pick like you're picking chalk if the enemy team for some reason decided to just ban all the good warriors or if you're just wanting a super fucking safe lane and you're you suck at solo maybe i don't know he's just his alt rather than first of all it's getting a damage boost and a power scaling boost secondly rather than having it so that you need to use it in conjunction with the one to get that knock for up. the extra damage yeah. well for the knock up it always has uh, the knock up so it yeah. it's basically making it so that you can use your one more freely without having to save it to use with your alt you can use your two while crippled and you can use your alt like you can use these abilities separately rather than relying as much on each other 
So, my opinions on this on this buff, um, Torrent, great buff. That's awesome. Like, that is cool. Uh, it definitely allows for some options. The alt buff, pointless. They're, again, taking away mechanics from the game, making Chalk a very easy god to play, which he is boring. He was already easy. Like, yeah, he, exactly. And now he's even easier. They're making easier. him easier, but now, rather than be like, hey, I'm going to have to throw my axe and then alt, and then it's like, well, now I'm in. You can alt in and throw your axe to escape afterwards, or throw your axe and then torrent to move somewhere else. It gives you... I feel like it actually will change the way he's played rather than just make him easier. So it's well, like, I don't know. My, my big thing like with, with Chalk was like, it was cool because like when you threw your axe, you're like, okay, you have three options. You can either teleport to it, create a massive AOE slow, or you can get like a nuke to go off. Now it's like, I can either escape, put a massive AOE slow down, and that's it. It's just like, I... I thought the way the one worked with the the alts was like the coolest thing in the game, and when it worked well, it was cool. Now it's like, well, well that's the, the game, and now it permanently knocks up all the time. Sweet, like I don't know. It. I I thought I think higher is. Mm, I feel like ultimates that rely on you having other abilities up are annoying because then it's like, let's say you're in a situation where you dove in, and you know. Like, oh, now my ult would be great, but it's not going to do as much damage, and it's not going to knock up because I already used my one in the fight earlier. Well, shit. Yeah, and... that, that's where, that's where like, you know, decision-making is key. And you can't just spam your abilities, and, you know, you have it... to actually think about what you're doing in the game. It'll be an interesting change to see how it works. Like, I, yeah. I, I understand the whole, you know, removing a bit of, like, the limited... It basically it lowers the skill ceiling on Chalk. Is what it does. So that wasn't very hard to begin with. It, well, yeah. But it'll, it does make him. I feel like while the skill ceiling is get, getting lowered a little bit, it makes it a little easier to reach that skill ceiling or skill ceiling. But no, no. What I'm trying to say is, the skill ceiling is lowered, but his potential of what he can actually do now is higher. So the character is stronger as a whole. But it's not as hard to be strong with him, so it's a, it's a catch twenty two, I guess. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Medusa. All right, so Medusa. Mana I, cost. I don't know. I I don't know why. I I don't know why. Well, I didn't really, you know, realize why? that there like, were mana issues on Medusa, but well, I did. But like, I mean, it it, it makes like it's a, it's a good buff. It's a quality of life buff to and it's basically not like she's... put this in the easy terms. It's not like they're buffing, you know, say, one of the really strong gods in that lane at all right now. I mean, you know, why would high res Scylla? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Do you know, yeah, yeah. you know what high res thought one point in time? They're like, oh man, we have this god that has incredible burst damage and a self root and a really safe escape and does you know late game some of the highest damage but struggles early game do you know what we should do we should we should totally just buff her initial early game damage and keep everything else the same because clearly her scaling is fine it's just that nope nope they didn't think that at all they're like we should just buff all her damage and improve her scaling so she can murder you every day all so, day okay I'm, I'm gonna take this to a place of reality for a sec the sentinel um, I think this is cool. It's just like Chalk's Torrent. Uh, being able to place a Sentinel out while crippled is cool because at max level, the Sentinel acts like a ward. So if someone cripples you and you want to get out after the cripple is over, but you don't know where to go, throwing the Sentinel in one direction gives you vision, which is great. Um, the Crush, originally before they updated it from the PTS. Um, why? I, I don't know why. But but not let's the not talk team about of high raises. Like, but anyway, after the patch notes, still I'm bummed. glad they, I'm glad they brought the scaling down. The but scaling then they increased the damage anyway. Well, no, again, they, it's like what they here's what honestly should have happened is I like the fact that they increased the base damage early. Yeah, but what that's what fair. they should have done is they should have kept the late game damage and the scaling the exact same, but just yeah, absolutely make it so that the initial damage at lower ranks is higher. 
Like, that's all they I think hitting for 310 is fine. Hitting for 310, which is what her old crush used to hit for at 20. Yeah. Or at also, max ring is fine. in case people weren't aware, um, with 80% scaling, the reason why 80% scaling is there is because of her passive. That makes it that she just gets free fucking power. So she doesn't need a lot of scaling because she gets a shit ton of it already. Just built in. Free scaling. Like your free power. Here you go, Scylla. Free power. You know what we don't need to do? Buff your scaling so that that free power just makes you murder the world. <laughs> like, I feel like this now brings her up as one of the uh, better choices right now. Like, she used to be, you know, below, say, a pick of a Janus or a Vulcan, in my opinion, or uh, yeah, or uh, even a Raijin, but now I'd say she's right up there with them with this. Like, well, it's, it's funny because, like, Scylla's so been on a roller coaster since the end of season two. Early season three, she was still pretty bad, and then they they kind of they buffed the power pods, and people were like, "Oh, hey, power pod still is a thing that just means she's good at, ever, at all points of the game," uh, which was no. cool. And then she got broken because people were playing nothing but Scylla, and it's like, no. So they took what they nerfed. Well, they nerfed power pods. Um, nerfed being the keyword there because they just brought them so that you can only buy them after level 7 or 10 or whatever it's level this 10 rate now. is and 10, which 10 time it's like your past well no, it's 10 for all classes but is it oh okay 10 but well, yeah but, so then that happened and now they're back to this point of like still is not getting played again let's buffer but here's the it's thing like, is no. she she was getting played like i've noticed a I decent know. amount of still play it's like why are we buffing Scylla? Why aren't we buffing other mages that aren't getting played? You know, like... Don't know. Why don't we do, a, like, a rework to the god that's getting a tier 5 skin at the end of the Odyssey, perhaps? Uh, I don't know. Anubis... Anubis is one of those gods <laughs> that... He's, he's a pub stomp reworked. god, and he will only be a pub stomp god. Like, there's not much they could really do for him. Like, other than maybe yeah, give no, him right. the ability to move with his one. Like I said, he needs a complete rework. That that god. But anyway, that's off topic of Patchnos. So yeah, uh, the um, last long god story short, they have severely just, no okay. I was gonna say Yeah. Because we you know went over what the difference is here from what you're actually viewing on the screen, Crush got a ten damage increase at all levels and an in scaling increase from eighty percent to ninety percent. So it's just Yeah. She's going to be doing more damage at all points in the game, and you're going to cry. Her so, early game's going to suffer a little bit, but not a lot anymore. Yeah, less it's suffering not early gonna be game, as hard as it was. more domination late game. Now, Susano, debatably, well, was basically one of the two top picks and bans of pretty much every game. Like, in games, at least at our level... If Susano and Alquang weren't banned, one of the teams got one of them and won the game. Like, that's just what happened. Susano now, like, he didn't just get hit with the nerf stick. He didn't get hit with the nerf back. He got hit with the nerf steamroller and is now just a flat pancake and useless. Like, they... What they did, before I go into what I think they should have done, is... They increased the precast time for the first slash on Stormcata. Now, what that means is rather than it basically going off and feeling practically instant, it's almost at a half second now delay between when you hit the ability and it goes off. And that's plenty of time for god positioning to change. For someone to, say, get a jump off and be out of reach of it. Like, yeah, it's weird. The second thing they did is they nerfed the damage not a little bit but a lot of the first and second attack so not only is it not going to go off slower but it's going to do significantly less damage now what they did do is completely change how you're supposed to use storm kata because now rather than doing two attacks and then dashing out to safety all three are for damage now with that being said the third one isn't a lot of damage so the ability as a whole, I feel, is designed to do roughly the same amount of damage with that third one going in. 
but the third one is it's still now you have to commit to going in Holy. to be able to do the damage and the scaling got reduced from 80 percent off the first two attacks down to 65 like his damage is just it's done but one of the worst <laughs> things is the way they changed his ultimate the ultimate it used to basically it charges up but the charge all it did was increase its size and hit radius and it would always knock up and always do full damage what they did now is remove the knock up unless it's fully charged which means that his cc is gone from his ultimate and his damage is gone from his one so his main source of damage and one of his biggest cc things basically is he's been hit hard and i've played against the susano since this change and i just laughed so i'm i'm actually just with him in jungle practice right now just kind of taking a look um so they've definitely like the the cast time be from the first slash to the one is definitely drastic however with that being said you can still get the combo off completely it just takes a lot more time now and the fact that you have to in order to do even close to the same amount of damage you have to use your dash offensively he sucks I do like the fact that now he doesn't have, you know, two forms of dash, and if he does, like, go in, he can just, like, use his, uh, what's his ability called? His jet stream to get away still. Like, he still has his jet stream, which is good. So he still does have some mobility. It's just not as much as it used to be. Well, he's still mobile. You can still use it to escape, but it's now a choice. Do full damage or hit, like, a wet noodle and get out. Like, it's... It... I feel I think... like that... I feel like the damage was a little too drastic of a nerf like i don't know how they would change it like if nothing else the precast time needs to go back to 0.1 seconds like it's not like it's not fair to make it that long um yeah something I, mean, I would to, put it to at least 0.25 something needs to be done about the one in terms of damage i the storm Kata, i don't know what because i agree he was too strong before but this he's just unplayable now and his ultimate here's and I, I you know we were i've been talking to like you i've been talking to alaska i've been talking to davy and the consensus that was made is that what should be done with the typhoon is not remove the knock up but make the damage from it scale similarly to that of ymir so you know how Ymir's alt when it full charges does more damage but the slow from it is always there no matter how long you charge it for i feel like the knockup should be there the whole time but the damage should scale so if you fire it off no, right away, it doesn't do a lot of damage but you still get the knockup as opposed to now the damage is there but the way that the reason why that is is let's just say you can't scale knock up like a tiny knock up or a big knock up that's not how it works you either have the knock up or you don't whereas it's easy to scale damage over time yeah yeah i mean i uh i agree with that i would i would definitely put the knock up back to where it was and definitely have it so that uh, his ca his one time does cast a little bit faster because it is very very slow right now. It's actually scary how slow that is. Yeah, but uh, long story short, you will definitely see a Susano buff in the near future. This is not going to last. There's no way they're going to let this stand because, as it is, he's just unplayable. Anyways. Moving on to the new god, Kamazots. He is a bat. He is an angry bat. He is, he is the most, he is the strongest god in the game, right now. He's there, there is there is no contesting this. He is the most broken. He is a very interesting kit, um, and we're gonna get that to a second, or into that in a second here. Um, he's definitely gonna see a nerf. That's for sure. 
Uh, oh, yeah. He's an assassin, which is cool. I like that because I mean jungle. Uh, let's start off with his passive. His passive basically gives him 5% lifesteal and healing uh, at all times, which is nice. But it also leaves behind these pools that uh, I believe the pools have maximum 10 drinks per pool. And it's yeah. anytime any god dies anywhere on the map. You don't even have to be close by it. If a god dies, a pool will drop that only you can see, and you can just use it to heal health and mana, which makes his sustain really, really, really strong. Not just health sustain, but mana sustain, so you don't have to worry about mana as much, which is good because you're going to be wanting to use his abilities all the goddamn time. True. Building CDR on this god is very much key. Yeah, uh, he's he's fun to play. I've played him a little bit. I played I played him in some uh, co-op versus AI because I haven't bothered to try to get him in casuals yet. But he uh, he hits for yeah. Moving on to his first ability, Screech. Basically, it's a line attack that does a decent amount of damage. It'll go through minions, so it'll be like if you're looking to clear a minion wave, that's going to be a main source of clear but it has an interesting mechanic attached to it. Like, the damage on it isn't yeah, super the high, but the mechanic cool. is is that if it hits an enemy god, it'll bounce back a sound wave. And if you catch that sound wave with Kamazots, you get a power buff for... Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the duration it's on it? 15... Oh um, my god. 15 seconds. 15 uh, that's seconds. That's the cooldown so, is 15 seconds. Yeah, it's 15 seconds as well. So literally, you can you can always apply it, and it's, it, it's like what Ho Yi's uh, used to be. It's Mark of their which golden is to be. insane. Like, yes, it's not always the easiest to hit, but it is super powerful. Like, it's an it's an interesting mechanic. I like it. I feel like it's a little too strong, but I like it. Um, Vampire. Another Cats. thing to add. Uh, yeah. Another thing to add about the one is that if you. If you hit an enemy god, um, the echo, the bounce back, acts like a hoagie ricochet and will bounce off um, structures and like walls and stuff. Yeah, so it's so. it's a cool, interesting mechanic. I like the fact that they're introducing, like what I like so far before we go on the other abilities is the fact that these abilities feel unique. It's not like oh another generic jump or oh another generic blah blah blah. It, they feel unique there's no passive like this there's no um ability like screech yet it's cool i like it moving on to vampiric bats which has uh we'll get into a little bit later a very unique thing to it again now first of all single target damage uh, in a lion form you know not super crazy range but it also applies a slow of 30 percent, and its damage is high very high 420 at max rank plus 130 percent scaling like that is a lot of damage especially yeah. if you factor in it working with screech so if you've used screech and then you use vampiric bats you get a free 40 power plus at 130 percent of that so you're like i don't know what math is on that right away but we're good let's just say like easily over 50 extra damage and it slows it's just really really strong but that's not where it stops if you use it on like a buff camp monster so say like on the mana buff or the you know speed buff or you know those things that i don't know uh what, what do assassins do all oh, right junglers run into all the time it gives you an extra buff of vampirism, which you get an extra 3% life steal and healing. Stacking three times, you can have up to an extra 9%, and it lasts 210 seconds. That's a long time. Like, I think that's about as long as a buff camp. Or buff. Oh, uh, I believe it is, yeah. So it lasts a long time, and it's very easy to go and refresh it. It is 
way too powerful of an ability right now. I feel the damage needs to be brought down. I like the uniqueness of uh, with the buff camps, though. That is cool. I don't want them to remove that. And I feel like 9% lifesteal isn't game-breaking. But but it's lifesteal and healing, so it's not game-breaking, but it when you combine that with his passive, he's stacking up to 14% without buying a single lifesteal item. Yeah, it's great. Now, Devour. It's It says it's a leap, <laughs> but it's a short one. But here's the thing. It's like it's, a hop. It's a little hop, but... Oh, it, it does a good amount of damage, but here's the big thing about it, is that it heals... Uh, you know, 15, 25, 55 plus 25 percent of your physical power per enemy hit. Now that, let's say you dive into a group of five minions, fifty-five times five. Holy shit! It heals a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I almost will see it mainly used on minion waves just to heal yourself back up, like. I don't know if you're noticing a trend, but the passive plus his two and his three all incorporate. Oh, I forgot to mention, Vampiric Bats also not doesn't just do damage; it brings back a heal. It also does a heal on initial impact as well. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is like the it it heals you and does damage to the target. Yeah, it's, a lot. So yeah, it heals you when it when you hit them, and then it he, and then it brings a heal to you. So it heals you twice. Like it's it's great. He has a lot of built in self healing. A lot of it. And I feel like it's too much. Especially when you consider the fact the amount of damage he also does. Then there's his ultimate, which is unique. It's uh you know, it's another one of those ones that puts you up in the air, but you know, much like Freya's, where you're only up for a certain period of time and you basically have to spam the attack or you just don't get them off. It works the same way. He goes up in the air, and he does three little dive downs. They The range isn't super big on it, but easy enough to land on targets if you were close enough when you initialized it. The more gods you hit with it, the more damage it does. Now, it's scaling on the power isn't a whole lot, so it's more about just getting good little bits of AoE. But uh, it's it's an interesting alt. I like it. I feel like the alt itself, I, I don't feel like it's broken, because here, yeah, you, let's say, uh, you know, comparing it to other alts, if you land all three hits on the same person, you're doing 900 damage at max rank, which, yes, is a lot, plus 20% power per hit, so I guess that's plus 60, actually, no, you're right, it's too much, I'm sorry, I'm done, too much damage. Um... You, you forgot, like, one of the biggest aspects of that all. Yeah, it does more damage per god hit. So, basically, if you yeah. land on three gods, the third god gets... The second god gets an extra 10%, third god gets an extra 20%. So, it's... Yeah, if, if you're the third god on that line, you are going to feel pain very, very quickly. Um, His damage is too... Cool... Yeah, it, it's very high. Yeah. It, it's very, very high. Uh, the, co the cool thing about his ult is, because it is ACC immune ult in the air... He is immune to towers, so he can pop alt at the edge of the tower and get a kill. And then if he's lucky, which he usually is, because uh, that's how he works, uh, he will be able to get out of the tower range without taking a single point of damage from said tower. It's not very fun. There will he be does... a lot of Kamazots diving people very, very early on in said oh, games. Yeah. He... Like... he just does way too much damage and has way too much healing. But he has one weakness. He's not if you could the let most any sort of heal, anti heal, well, that too. But if you build any any sort of anti heal against him, he's literally not going to be able to do much. Yes, he'll still do high damage, but his healing is gone. Therefore, he's a lot more susceptible to yeah. dying. So, the big so, thing with building Camelot, if you have to build him tanky, if you don't build him tanky, he will just melt. Yeah, yeah, you, you're going to build him like a bruiser type. God, he's going to be built similar to that of, say, a Thor. Nemesis. Mm, no, because Nemesis builds auto-based. You're not going to build Kamazots for autos, you're going to build them for abilities. 
I build Nemesis tanky, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. You know. I, I build Nemesis tanky. Like, you will not see me playing Nemesis with it out at least two tank items. Sometimes three. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, he's going to need a nerf. He's definitely going to need a nerf. It's going to be the only way. But he, there's no way Kamazots, as he is right now, will make it into ranked. Not a chance. And if because he does, so help us God, because we will like, all die. If I, I'm not gonna say right now, but well, I'm going. Sorry, I'm, I am going to. If we did have a tier list that we were real bit rebuilding right now, I'm not gonna talk about everything else. But Kamazots would be in the SS level right now. He is. Yeah, he would be too strong. Hundred percent. So uh, um, that was. The patch notes. Any last things you want to say before we go off? And overall, I think this was a okay patch. Um, most of the item changes were good. The god changes were eh. Um, I feel like they did a lot of overcompensation, and the new god is awesome, but holy shit, broken. Uh, I don't even want to say broken. He's just very, very strong. Um, play him while you can. Because you will not get to enjoy this for long. I promise you that. If he if he makes it to next week or next patch without a nerf, I will be shocked. Watch the right, guys, that was just, you know, cry. No, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> don't even say that. Don't, and you know what they're going to be like? We made a mistake on Scylla. She doesn't do enough damage on Crush. We're not going to buff the early damage. All. We're just going to increase the scaling to 200%. Uh, don't even. All right. Uh, <laughs> final, final thoughts on patch. Please get a new balance team, high res. They don't know what they're doing. For the love of God, please. High res, please. High res, please. 